so basically uh let's start with some basics of python and sql as well uh like because uh, uh we got some queries from some of the students and requesting for the basics of python and sql so we will start the basics of python and sql as well <clears throat> So uh, basically, uh, what Python? Okay. So the Python is like Python is very uh, very popular programming language. Uh, we can say or we can say scripting language. So uh, here, what we do, like uh, uh, I mean, I mean, it is it is very popular because of its uh, vast functionality and features. Okay. So basically, like, what are the features? Like, is it is easy to learn? Like, any beginner from any type of background, either he is from uh, uh, biology or any big or any any science, any type of background, uh, any student have, uh, he can easily learn the Python. Okay, because its its syntax is uh, really uh, clean and elegant. Like, uh, and it's it's a English like uh, syntax. When we, when we will be using the Python programming language. Then we will see like how easy, uh, how easy code in Python instead of some other programming languages. You might have come from other backgrounds as well, like C, C plus plus, Java. Some of you, okay. So you will, you will also find like the Python is really, really simple. Okay. So and second thing, it is interpreted. Interpreted means like uh, when you, when you write your code, then the the code will be executed line by line. Okay. So basically, line by line execution means like uh, first of all, your first line will be executed, then second line will be executed, and let's suppose uh, there is some error in second line, then the program will stop there. Okay, and you have to resolve that error to to execute the further lines. So this is the interpreted language, and uh, fourth one is it is it is a cross platform. Cross platform means. Uh, you can write your code anywhere and you can write run your code anywhere like you can if if you are using like different different systems like you uh, windows mac operating systems or linux then it, it is not it that's not a matter of uh, any platform dependency just write your code in your uh, any uh, any type of environment like windows or anything and you can run that code uh, without any changes into any any other type of uh, platform okay and this is a free and open source so basically uh, almost all of the programming languages are open source and free okay and also yeah so uh, python is object oriented so basically there is a concept uh, uh, in our uh, in our uh, uh, programming world which is called as object oriented programming so what is object oriented programming so basically uh, the objects you see in real world okay like let's suppose there is a dog or a pen or any animal or anything any any real world object okay so you can see like the real world objects contain some features and some functionalities okay so that type of thing like the real world type of thing like any any type of object which 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 contains the features and some functionalities you can you can code in python so this is the object oriented programming okay. and also yeah so basically one of the most important feature or we can say one of the most beneficial feature is large standard library okay so you do not need to write any type of logic from scratch okay because i mean almost 70 to 80 percent of your code will depend on the standard libraries which like uh, which the python provides or the open source community provides why because they have already created all of those large complex logics and uh, and uh, converted them into one single function or one single uh, name you can just directly use those names. you do not need to take care about the their complex logic so this is the very important i mean this is the very much uh, uh important feature due to which the pro uh, this python is uh, very uh, popular and you and if you are writing your code uh, in some other programming languages like c c plus plus java then you can easily integrate your code okay like let's suppose if you want to integrate your python code with java then there is a package like jython j y t h o n 
so you can use that and your java and java code and python code will be integrated and run to run simultaneously okay and also uh, this uh, python contains the magic methods so basically the magic methods are like you can create some functionalities which can be nested and any other programming language like c c plus plus java do not contain this type of functionality magic methods okay so these are some popular uh, features due to which the uh, python is uh, very uh, popular and what you can do using python so any type of uh, it related task you can assume you can perform using the python okay whether it is if you want to perform some web development uh, things website development things then you can use python so for python there are these these are these are the libraries the which are the popular libraries like django uh, flask web 2 py okay so these are some uh, popular libraries by which you can create some websites nice websites and use them okay okay if you want to create some graphics or graphical user interfaces then you can use and these type of uh, these much of uh, uh, libraries again if you want to perform some multimedia programming then you can use and these type of like if you want to create some gaming uh, uh, some games then you can use the pi game so game is also a multimedia uh, software right so you can use any any uh, library from here to to create some multimedia programming so likewise you can you can assume any type of uh, thing in in your uh, in your uh, it field and you can perform those tasks or those particular you can create those applications using python okay so these are some these are just just uh, some examples like text processing image processing machine learning data science data analytics any type of thing you can assume and you can perform that in python okay so uh, first of all how will you uh, uh, set up your python environment okay so basically what you have to do you have to go to python you have to type python download in your google search and you will find this link download python okay <coughs> sorry so when you will be clicking the that uh, link you will get this type of page and you can use this download option here this will be this will provide you the latest python uh, which is i mean the latest stable version of python uh, you will get from here and you can download it easily in your local system after downloading uh, you have to just install install that python uh, uh, according to this uh, strategy so you can see like uh, so if after downloading your python so you uh, and when you will be running the installer you will get this type of screen okay install python and something something so what you have to do you have to check this particular option i mean uh, by default this option is uh, not checked but you have to check this uh, this particular option to install your python after checking this you have to click on the install now and after performing install now you will get some this type of screen and you have to perform just the next and then install and after that uh, this installation will begin and as soon as your python will install you uh, you can uh, you can check uh, you can check easily like if, if the python is available so what you have to do if the python is available you have to check the python then you you have to open this command from by uh, typing here uh, cmd or you can okay this is the command prompt. you have to type cmd and uh, you can perform open so this uh, this this black screen will be open so this is our command prompt so if you want to check like if python is already installed then you can uh, type your here com type a command here like python okay and just press and enter if you see this type of prompt so basically then then okay this is the python is installed okay if you are uh, <coughs> if you do if you let, let's suppose the python is not installed then you will get this type of message like python is not recognized as an internal external command okay and if you have python then you will get this type of prompt okay so after checking this okay the python is available so you can you can see here like you have python of this version 3.12 okay so i have uh, in my machine i have installed the latest version of python okay 
and and rest of the things are uh, your uh, systems uh, configuration like i mean when you have installed your python and uh, what is your uh, i mean uh, windows i mean windows version what type of processor do you have okay so these are the uh, your system configuration and this is your python version like which which version we are using okay so this is how your python i mean this is very very much a uh, simple installation because there is nothing else like you just need to click on your installer python installer which you have downloaded and just check this particular button and install and then just perform next next <clears throat> and you will this type of installation will be inst started okay after that <clears throat> so basically uh, when you have installed your python so you can see i mean if you want to uh, write some uh, some code then you can use this python interpreter as well okay so you can write like let's suppose we want to print hello world okay what we can do we can use this print function and what we want to print here uh, we want to print hello world okay and and that's it the screen will prompt you with hello world message okay so this is how uh, you will write your code interactively but this type of coding style is not recommended generally you have to write your scripts and after writing your scripts you have to execute the, those scripts okay so <coughs> let's suppose uh, let me show you let's suppose, let me create a folder here at a stop okay let's suppose i create a file here in this uh, desktop we have created a folder at desktop and python and let's let us give this uh, uh, hello dot py okay this is the name of the file okay uh, you can you can name your file anything you want but you it the name should be relevant okay so this is the file and save it now i can write here like let's suppose i want to print uh, hello world okay and then in the next line uh, i want to print like uh, uh, welcome to okay so i i just want to uh, print uh, two messages in my console or in my screen like hello world welcome to the world of python okay so i can use print statement so print statement just print the the message you want to print in an output output screen or you can set the display okay so i have created this file hello.py py is the extension you when you will be creating your python code and you you will be writing your scripts then you have you must include this .py extension for your all of the python files okay you can use any type of uh, code editor or uh, text editor to create your files okay there is no restriction about any type of uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, code coding style okay so uh, this is hello world.py and i want to run this hello world.py and you can see i have placed my file in in this folder like on desktop this is my desktop or on this desktop i have created this folder named python and here i have uh, created my uh, file now i want to execute this script this is a script i have created okay i want to execute this script and what you have to do you have to go your go to your console i mean this command prompt so and now you have to go to this folder this particular python folder so you can see like here you can see i mean uh, this particular url of your folder okay so you have to copy this url and you have to perform cd and this okay so look uh, before it was in some other directory okay look this you can see here pa this path c users himanshu dot single zero one okay now <coughs> now uh, you can when i perform this command cd cd means change directory okay so what you want to do you want to go to this folder because your file is present in this folder right so you want to go to this folder python folder on desktop so what i did i copied this path from here and i have performed the change directory command as soon as i perform this you can see your console has this directory 
desktop and python okay in on the desktop there is a folder python okay now you can perform you can run your script here okay what so if you want to run your script what you have to do you just need to write the python command and then followed by your script name the file name okay so my file name is hello.p now as soon as i press i will press the enter the code will be running okay so look i have uh, printed these two messages on my screen using i mean i have written the code to print these messages so you can see these two messages are, messages are there in my okay so this is how you will start or you this is how you will check like if the python is installed properly or not so any doubts till now I'm assuming that you do not, uh, you guys do not have any doubts. So, so let's proceed. So basically, uh, so far we have only used the print function. Okay. So what is print function? What else we can do with the print function? Okay. So basically, this is this is a syntax of print function where you can find many type of arguments you can use. So basically, these two arguments you can ignore the file argument and flush argument this is not uh, this is not the mandatory ones you guys to know okay uh, because of uh, data engineering purposes so i will be explaining this these three arguments like what is the star objects what is sap what is end okay so so far uh, what you have so like let me just distribute this so look when i have written this code i have written two types of line print hello world and print welcome to the world of python okay i have written two line of code and in these two line of code what i have did i have written two print statements to print some messages and by default you can see there is a new line here okay when this message message is printing you can see this the new line is here okay after printing the first line there is a enter automatically i mean the new line is the, here and the second message is here okay if you want to change this functionality then what, what you can do you can use end argument and equals to so you can see here uh, by default end has the value of slash n slash n means the new line okay new line this slash by default this slash n uh, this slash n is here so slash n indicates like the new line is here so what it, it indicates after printing the objects in in the in this print statement just per print the new line just mark i mean just go to the new line okay if you are using the slash n. so if you want to ignore this functionality and if you want something else then you can use end argument here <coughs> end argument here <coughs> so let's suppose i want here a uh, dollar instead of this okay so what i can do i can perform here this so end equals to dollar now i can save the file and now i have to run this file so look before it was the new line here but now it is a dollar here you can easily see hello world and then dollar and then this okay so this is what end indicates okay now uh, let's take an another example of print statement so now what i have did here uh, what i did here uh, i have created a print statement before it was in the single argument i mean arguments are separated using comma okay any type of function you are using if you are inserting any comma in your arguments and so this argument is different and this argument is different okay so likewise if you are using this type of code so you can easily see this is the first argument and this is our second argument now if you are running and you can see i have not included any spaces here like 
there is no space here there is no space here okay now if you will run this code you can see by default this space is there in between these two messages hello and world okay here i have included this space but there is no space here in between but still by default this space is there <coughs> so now if you want to change this functionality as well what you can do you can use uh, argument separator step okay you can see here this sep argument separator you can see there is a default value for sep is space if you want to change this functionality then you can use sep equals to like if you want to use semicolon instead of uh, space then you can specify sep equals to semicolon now you have saved your file and you can so look before it was a space here but now as we have uh, modified its functionality it is a uh, semicolon here okay so this is what uh, print statement and its arguments are so what is this argument objects so the argument this ob argument is this the this particular message is the argument objects okay this is a object this is a object this is these two are the objects so like if you want to perform some like uh, okay so uh, let's let me include this as well here <coughs> look so these all three are the objects okay then this is a sep argument argument and if you want to include any and argument then you can use this argument also here okay uh, just a comma and then that's it and now if you if you will run your code you can see look hello hello and this is a second argument second object so that's why separator is semicolon then third object the separator is this now in this third object this is this is this hall is the third object okay so that's why we have included here is space so that's why the, the space is there not the semicolon okay <coughs> this separator only works between the multiple objects not under the one object okay this is one object this is one object this is one object and then the the last argument is and is equals to this so that's why the and argument is there okay so this is how your print function behaves so uh, any doubts till now Cool. So we can proceed with <clears throat> further. So basically, uh, so far we have just utilized the print function. But what else? If you want to uh, write some messages, uh, I mean, let's suppose you have written thousands lines of code or uh, one lakhs lines of code in your Python in your file okay and later on uh, i mean you can you can left your organization and some someone else has to maintain your code or someone else else has to work on your code then how will he understand what your code is doing okay what is your do code is doing how how will you, how will he understand the logic behind your code <laughs> what is the complexity of your code how he can understand so for that you have to mention i mean when while i mean it's a good practice it is not a mandatory but it's a good practice if you are uh, if you are uh, working on your code like if you are writing some code then uh, it's a good practice to just include some documentation some document strings or you can say dumb, some you you have to write some uh, you have to write some uh, uh, what we can say uh, uh, comments in your code so that it, it will be helping your uh, further developers or it will be helping you also to understand your code like what you have written what this code is doing and how, uh, how what is the changes you need to do and which developers worked on which type of which particular code so this type of documentation or this type of comments we do in our python okay so uh, basically uh, you have if you want to write your comment write the comments then what you can do you have to use hash in the very beginning and you can write your comment so let's suppose uh, uh, i can write a comment here like demonstration of print function with this 
are the humans. <laughs> okay, so I have written this comment. So this comment is non-executable. Okay, this comment will not be executed. This comment will be ignored. Okay, so look, I have written this this particular comment. Now, if I will be writing, I will be running this code. Uh, let me clear my screen first. <coughs> So look, I have written this comment, but this comment is not printed in my console, in my command prompt. Why? Because this is a comment. This is a documentation of your program. Okay. So this, I mean, later on when other developers will see your code, if he read your comment, he, he can easily find, okay, from this code, you are demonstrating different, different uh, types of uh, 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 different different types of argument again you are understanding the different different types of argument of print function okay so you have i mean this is a good practice while writing any type of code not the python but any type of code if you are writing you have you just make sure you write the particular comment in your code so that any <laughs> other developers can understand your what is your code is doing and later on uh, if you if you are if you have written some some of your code and after one year or one month or one two three months you have to see your code then you can also easily see i mean uh, <clears throat> you can also easily understand like what what is this code is doing because no one can uh, remember the logic after writing the code and no one can remember the functionality of the code you have to check uh, check the functionality of code if you are uh, working on some updations of your code or any uh, updations of your application <clears throat> so you have to write your comment so just to write your comment just include hash before any line it will be in comments so let's suppose uh, if i uh, uh, perform here a hash now it 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 has also become a comment you can see there is one uh, line hello world okay before here now if you, if i will be running this now you can see there are two lines of there are two lines of messages on why because you have commented out your code here okay as soon as you will uh, comment your code with hash the line will be ignored this line will not be executed and that line is not executed that's why these two messages are, are there otherwise these three messages will be there okay so this is how uh, this comment uh, uh, i mean behaves and this is how comments are useful so this is a single line comment okay and if you have included hash then you have to complete your comment into one line only but what else if you want to write this type of multi line comment okay you either you have to uh, uh, write a hash in each of in each of the line to ma mark it, it as comment or what you can do you can use triple quotes this triple quotes to include it is in an comment so this is now multi line comment so you can use either triple single quotes or you can use triple double quotes okay Look. <clears throat> so just make sure what i mean uh, if you are using single quotes to open your comment then just close with the single quote if you are using uh, double quotes to open your comments then just close with the double quote if you are uh, opening your uh, comment using double quotes and you are using single quote here then it will not work okay you have to you close that comment a multi-line comment using the same quotes which you are using the single quote or either double quote. <coughs> also you cannot use the mixture of the uh, quotes like let's suppose if you want to do this this is not possible like two double quotes and one single quote this is not possible either use this three single quotes or just use the three double quotes then it will be the multi-line comment okay so this is the comment or we can say this is the documentation string of our code okay so so far do you have any questions okay so okay so this is uh, this is all about the uh, comments and print function so now uh proceed with like let's okay so basically this is the hard coded thing okay 
now if you want to change your messages using some variables or something else okay so basically if you uh, by variables what i mean uh, a container okay so basically you can uh, let me uh, let me just open this this okay so basically uh, what variables are uh, means so variable is a name used to refer the memory locations <clears throat> because we cannot remember memory addresses and used to hold values. okay so look let me show you so everyone knows like uh, in our computer memory is there the, uh, the hard disk and the ram and rom okay so these all are the memory types okay so by the memory word what we understand we in in computing world by the memory word we have, we assume the memory refers to the ram ram memory only okay ram random access memory so basically when you are uh, you are uh, creating your code then you might need to save your data temporarily okay uh, because this is not a complex thing this is just a simple simplest uh, thing and there's just a one liner code here okay in the future you have to write um, write thousands of lines of your code in your python okay. so in between you have to save your data temporarily in your uh, in your program okay how will you do that how will you save your data temporarily in your memory so that you can utilize that particular uh, uh, value uh, in further lines of code let's suppose you want to save some of your data on line number one and on line number 100 you want to use that particular saved data or value we can say how you can do that okay so you have to you have to save your data into into some memory location okay so here in this scenario the variable is variable concept is there okay so basically you cannot remember any type of memory locations okay let's suppose i if i if i tell you like just remember the phone numbers of all of your contacts you cannot do that type of thing okay if you have hundreds of contacts in your mobile then you can't remember all of the phone numbers right you what you what you do in your mobile phones you just type your number of that particular person and type the name to save the contact number okay so that particular name is there for the reference of that particular number so that later on you can remember okay i have to call this person you just uh, search for that particular name and you got that particular uh, number but you do not you cannot remember that number right so the, like like this particular example you cannot remember the memory locations because we have uh, uh, lakhs of crores of the memory locations in our uh, in our computing systems you and you cannot remember all of the memory locations and you cannot remember like on which memory location which type of data is stored okay so you have to name that particular memory location like you have named your phone number according to the name okay so you have to name your memory locations and then you have to save your data okay so <clears throat> so in so that this particular name in programming world is called as variable okay so this is what we are saying so variable is a name used to refer the memory location okay so this is nothing else this is just a reference of a particular location where your data will be stored your value will be stored okay so so basically uh, how can you create your variables so you just need to also always make sure you just name your variables very uh, i mean uh, I mean very relatively okay you do not i mean just do not uh, use any random characters to write your name like uh, a i mean a then b uh, c right okay so you ju just don't use this type of variable names just use the relative names for the variables so that you can easily understand uh, i mean you can easily remember the names of the variables okay so how can you define your uh, variables you have to you can use any type of combination of your letters we have a to z 26 letters we have digits 0 to 9 10 digits are there and you can use underscore as well okay so underscore what is underscore uh, there is a minus sign you can see in your keyboard okay if you if you perform minus if you press that minus sign directly then it is a minus 
and if you press shift plus minus sign that then it is underscore okay so this is the difference between underscore and minus so you can use underscore combination of letters and digits okay you can use these three type of things to name your variable okay this is this is the rule of create i mean the i mean i am explaining you what is the rule of your uh, creating your uh, variables okay you can you can use combination of letters which is a to z 26 letters are there okay digits digits are 0 to 9 so which is 10 digits and underscore you can use uh, these things only in your variable name second thing this is a case sensitive okay so what is case sensitive uh, if you can see like if i have written here a uh, name and name or i can see or, or name okay or name <coughs> any type of combination okay so look many type of combinations are there so i have written same thing but with different type of cases here all are in lower cases here all are in upper cases here n is in capital and all are in a lower case here a is in capital and all are in lower case so likewise so these all are different these are not the same thing in the programming world okay this is very different from this and this is very different from this where this is very different from this these all are not same this is a case sensitive language programming uh, python is very case sensitive language you can, i mean this is not same as this okay this particular name variable is not the same as this particular name variable okay so just make sure make uh, i mean make sure like uh, <clears throat> i mean you are using the proper uh, casing while creating and while utilizing your names okay i mean uh, i mean variables okay third thing third thing the third thing is like uh, while writing your uh, <clears throat> variables you can use underscore and the name of your variable okay and uh, like let's suppose number of persons okay so this is a valid variable name this is a these are the valid variables names and uh, okay and another example like this is another uh, uh i mean uh, this is one two three okay so this is another a valid variable name okay now uh, uh this is another uh, valid variable name okay so these are the valid variables name now this is invalid variable name. look okay so this is invalid why because i mean the digits which you are using must not i mean your variable name must not start with any type of digit okay here my variable name starts from 3 3 is a digit so it is a it is not a correct variable name okay let, let me let me just execute this then you you will see like this is a error look here it, it this particular co converted into red and if you if you run your code you will get the error here look you are getting some error okay because you have used three is three uh in the front i mean uh, your your variable name is starting from three so this is not a this is invalid so look invalid decimal literal literal you are getting some syntax error okay so this is how if you remove this three from here now look if you run your code it will run fine <coughs> okay so this is what uh, i am explaining you like this is this particular variable is invalid so your variable name must not start from digit and uh, some and others are uh, other combinations are valid but this is not in not a valid so these while creating your uh, variable names or while creating your variables in your python you must keep in mind these type of rules like this is a case sensitive second thing you can use any possible number of uh, uh, any combination of uh, uh, letters digits and underscore okay and you you must not start uh, your variable name using using a digit okay you can you can also do this type of thing abc and xyz 
okay so this is also a, uh, this is also a valid uh, variable okay this is also a valid variable but if i will do here this then it is invalid variable okay it must not start with digit so this is one, uh, this is uh, all about the variable so basically <coughs> uh, what i did let's suppose uh, i create uh, some here, some variable here uh, name equals to uh, let's suppose i am writing here one, two. okay so what i did here i created a name variable here and to the name variable i i have given a value this my name okay himanshu Sundar. i have given this name so as soon as this line will be executed what it does it will reserve a memory location in your ram and store this value in that particular location now if you want to use this variable you can directly use so let's suppose i want to use this name here let me remove these now what i want to do i just want to uh, here uh, write this thing thank you and then i just want to want to print my name after this thank you message so what i can do i can use this the variable name directly okay this variable name so here i have created a variable and in this variable i have stored some value okay now i can use directly this variable here okay now if i will run this code you can see thank you and followed by my name okay uh, i can remove this thing or i can comment these lines so you can easily okay. <clears throat> so look thank you message and then my name because uh, i have created this variable here if i will not create this variable and i will be using this variable directly then you will get an error look name is not defined you're getting this uh, this name variable is not defined he do, uh, i mean the program does not find this name variable you are getting this name error stating this name variable is not defined okay so you must define this variable before utilizing this variable okay so another thing you can modify this variable in the program flow let's suppose there are thousands of lines of code is here now you want to modify this name here you can directly modify this so look let's suppose i modify it by saying prof okay now you can directly again use this look look so first of all the variable name was himanshu so as soon as it encountered the name variable here it has printed himanshu only and after that when i modified this variable it uh, so the variable is modified now the name value i mean value for this name variable is rohit so it is printed here okay so this is how you will create your variable and you will play your with your variable very nice so <clears throat> any questions so far so i'm assuming uh, as well. okay so now uh, we have talked so much about the variables we have talked about so, so much about the values and all now how many types of values we can use okay so far we are just using the letters and all okay like this hello world and this this okay so far we have only using the string so this is called as a string any type of a letter i mean any type of uh, paragraph or english like word you encountered that is a string this 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 is a string okay so these are all strings okay so basically how many types of data are present in our python programming language okay so basically in general uh, we can say <coughs> we have a string we have list we have tuple and before that we have integers we have quotes okay and list tuple that 
dictionaries okay and uh, dictionaries and then sets okay and okay so these are some basic uh, data types in in our python okay integers floats strings list double dictionary and sets so what are the integers 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 are nothing like nothing but the numbers without decimal like 1 2 3 4 okay 0 minus 1 minus 2 these are all comes under the category of integers okay these are all the integers what are the floats floats are the decimal decimal numbers or we can say real numbers like 1.01 1 .01, okay 1.1 .1, 2 2.0004 okay any type of decimal or real number is called as float float number floating number if you are writing 2.0 then it is also a floating number if if you are writing this then it is an integer number but it is a float as soon as you will include the dot i mean decimal here it is it is a floating number okay <clears throat> floats a string is the normal strings are there okay so a string is in when when you will be creating integers or floats you do not use this double quote or single quote to create your integer or variables integer or floats but if you are using the strings then you have to use either double quotes or single quotes or triple quotes okay you have to use these three types of four types of quotes to create our strings like here i have created this string uh, hello one two three okay here i create quote. here let's create uh, something else this is python and let, let's create here uh, I, okay so <clears throat> these all are the types of strings okay so basically when you enclose your uh, double quotes or single quotes around any value it is automatically converted into a string if you use this double quote here and two three four five so you can easily see if you have included double quotes around the integer value or a floating value anything it is automatically converted into string now it is no more a floating value it is a string value as soon as you have included these quotes either double quote or single quote anything i mean any type of quote have you have included now it is converted into a string okay so this is the string list list is i mean so far these three uh, these three types of data types contain only one value at a time so let's suppose if you have created so let me give you an example let's suppose i have created a variable uh, number okay num equals to 12 so this variable contains only one value which is 12 and it is type it is a type of integer if okay and let's suppose and here i have created a variable name okay so so far it is also contains only one value there are no multiple values are here okay but now what you want to create some type of list like let's suppose if if there is a, some function in your uh, in your house or you just you are just going to market to buy some some things then what you do like you can't remember so many type of so many things you want to buy or anything what you do you just create a list either on paper pen or on the whatsapp or on the notes in your mobile anything just you create the list of the items you want to buy from the market okay so to, to just to remember the things like okay so that type of list if you want to create in your uh, python then these four types of uh, different different structures are there okay so what that list contains that contain the multiple values okay so these four type of data types or we can say data structures contains multiple values so if you if you are going to create a list then you have to create a list using this uh, this bracket this this we called as square bracket okay so you have to use a square bracket to create a list now you can use any type of value here like i have included this value as well uh, then three 
3.9 then uh, <clears throat> what else okay so another list here uh, for okay so this is this is an example of list so this particular list contains in total four elements or we can say four items first item is this second item is this third item is this i mean 3.9 and fourth item is this so a list can contain another list here okay so we can say here this is a nested list and now if we if we talk about this nested list then this nested list contains three items first item second item and third item okay so this is a list now if you want to create a tuple then what you can do you can create a tuple like this you have to use small brackets instead of instead of square brackets this is the i mean there is one more difference i will explain you what is the main difference here in between these two but yeah if you want to create a tuple then you have to use the square uh, sorry uh, small brackets and if you want to create a list then you have to use a square brackets so now you can see this tuple also contain four elements first one is integer second one is string third one is float fourth one is list so you can also include this here okay so you can include here also okay this so this is also a valid like uh, this contain integer string uh, float this is a list this is a tuple so this is a nested nested list this is a nested tuple where you have included values of different different types okay this is this you can also use tuple here okay so this is a this is a list and tuple now dictionaries so everyone has used uh, english to english in dictionary or english to hindi dictionary in your life okay so what does it it stands like uh, if you have if you have like uh, i mean if you want to look for some meaning of some of the words what you do you just uh, look for that particular word that word is the key when you are searching in your dictionary english to english or either english to hindi okay so that particular word is a key in your uh, in your uh, dictionary and corresponding meaning of that word in the dictionary is in that particular dictionary is the value which you are looking for okay so this type of functionality also created into dictionary so if you want to create a dictionary what you have to do you have to use curly brackets here and now in in the in real world dictionary what you what you have you have some keys and some values corresponding them so you have to again create here key so like a uh, key one and corresponding value value and then this is first item here this is first element here key and value so this if you if you look for the key then its, it's corresponding value will be there okay again now there is another uh, key and then there is another value okay so likewise you can create uh, a dictionary uh, which uh, which is very similar uh, to your real world dictionaries okay and sets so in mathematics you have you have already seen what are the sets and all so the set is a type of uh, data location we can say or data structure where you can store unique values okay so let's suppose uh, here i so you you can uh, again you, if you want to create a set you have to use the same curly brackets here also you have to use curly brackets and here here also you have to use the curly brackets just the difference is if you are using this key value pair okay then it is a dictionary and if you are writing your uh, directly uh, you are writing uh, some uh, values here without mentioning key or value pair then this is a set this is this is the only difference so <coughs> you can see i have included uh, some repetitions as well here in my values okay so look uh, the one is also repeated four is also repeated okay two is also repeated in this particular uh, dictionary three is also repeated so in the meantime in the in the in the behind the scenes in the memory what it will store instead of this it will store this thing 
Okay, you have created a set like this, but in your memory, this data will be stored, not the this data. It, it the set will only store the unique values, not the uh, repetition. Okay, so this is all about the data structures of uh, Python. So so far, do you have any questions here? Okay, cool. So uh, let me just uh, uh, let me let us just uh, stop our class here. Let me just give you some examples of each of this type of uh, uh, data structure here, and then we can stop our exam. We can stop our class here. Okay. So let me comment. Let me comment these. Okay and. And now uh, let's let let us start creating the different types of variables. So first of all, let's create a numeric integer value. Okay, so let's suppose I have created a number here. Now if you will print here, um, okay. Now let me let me just uh, comment out this code. This code, so it will be a separate. So look, I have created this uh, variable, which is an integer variable, and now I am printing that variable. Okay, so you can easily see if you run here. So look, this is a 30. This is a numeric value. Okay, if you want to check, like let's suppose you have created uh, created your variable, and if you want to check like what type of what is the type of that variable, then you can use type function. Type, and now this variable okay so now what it does this type function will uh, will try to find out the data structure or data type of this variable and then this print function will later on print that particular type so look what will be its answer you can see int so int stands for integers so you have created 13 as an integer so that's why this class int is here now if you make it as float now if you see then it will be class float okay now if you make this as a string then it will be class string str str stands for string now if you make it as a list sorry list here okay so now this will be a list so if you make this as a tuple this is a tuple now this is a tuple now you can easily see look, tuple okay if you create this as set then you can again uh, use this and now set okay if you want to uh, make it as dictionary then you have to perform some key value pair here like name Okay, and then H is six. Then uh, something else like uh, like uh, mobile. Then uh, something here. Okay, so this is how uh, your uh, I mean uh, this is what uh, uh, so this is a dictionary. Now if you run here, you will see dict dict stands for dictionary. Okay, so this is how you create your uh, data structures and you can use, uh, if, if you want to know the type of your data structure, then you can use directly the type function against that data, data against that variable and you will, you will get to know like what type, what type of data this particular variable contains. Okay, so uh, this is it. So do you have any questions for me for today? Uh, cool so we just uh, okay there is okay one more type is there boolean okay so in some cases uh, you have only two types of values which is true and false these two values are there false okay 
so these two values are called as boolean boolean values boolean value so any type of boolean variable can have only these two types of values only okay boolean values boolean variables do not have any type of this type of value or anything boolean value boolean variable either have true value or false value these two values can be there okay so let me show you an example of boolean also so let's uh, let's create here okay so this variable is there num and its value is true now if you type if you print this and then you can see here bool bool is boolean okay if you want to print value of this variable then you can easily see the value of this variable also okay if you want to put here false then false is there okay so so, uh, so basically this is a boolean type of variable which contain only two which can contain only two types of values either true or false okay so this is another uh, another data type so this is an exam these are the examples of each type of uh, data type i have not explained you the complex data type and range data type because this is uh, the and frozen data, set, data frozen set because these three are not not in the scope of the data engineering things so we are not going into these three types of uh, data structures if you want to explore then you can explore by googling some stuffs these are very pretty simple okay so this is it uh, we have so far we have seen the uh, data types of python so now uh, uh, to, from tomorrow uh, we have we will be exploring the these data types in in a great detail like what is a string what else manipulations you can do in the strings what are the list what are the tuple what are the differences between these two okay what is the dictionary and how can you manipulate these data structures as well okay so we will see like what are the functions associated so we will we will uh, we will uh, try to understand these data types and data structures in a very great detail uh, in uh, in tomorrow's class okay so so far if you have any questions then you can ask me out right now or you can just uh, ask me uh, questions tomorrow as well that's not an issue